Pleasant City's council meeting. This is November 1st, 2010, and we have just um, come out of closed session. And Mr. Black, could you please report on any final actions taken in closed session, please? Yes, Mayor, no final actions are taken in closed session. Thank you. And Madam Deputy Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Pro Tem Burns? Here. Council Member Murray? Here. Council Member Slurt? Here. And Mayor Shalong? Here, thank you. If you could all please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Okay, we are going to start this evening uh, with the consent calendar, which is the approval of our regular meeting minutes of October 18th. Approval of warrant claims for the period October 20th through November 1st. And our biweekly payroll reports for the period ending October 23rd, paid October 29th, 2010. Uh, Mayor, I move to approve the consent calendar with uh, a correction or two okay. the meeting minutes. Sure. Uh, on page five, fourth paragraph from the top, uh, in the middle of that fourth paragraph, um, I was uh, discussing um, the child care council cause. And uh, actually, I think what I stated was that the city currently collects $11,000, that Mr. Butler had reported that uh, for rentals on an annual basis for the uh, cultural center. But in fact, the, the bigger issue is that the city loses $25,000 annually on renting the cultural center. That whole sentence was kind of out of yeah. flat. Yeah, I think what he was saying is that we generate maybe eleven thousand in fees, but we lose twenty five thousand after expenses. That's correct. And then the other is on page four, uh, the uh, second paragraph from the bottom. Uh, in the first line uh, talks about uh, stated that the dialogue heard tonight uh, enforces and it should be reinforces that's all I have okay. anything else council I'll second it with the changes thank you all those in favor aye, aye. opposed passes four to zero Okay, uh, we have no public hearings this evening. I have a Mr. Miles, you can wait till public comment. Thank you. Uh, normally, if a person wants to speak on the warrant, and you have you have one minute. Please come forward. Uh, I found something Friday that I think is disturbing, and I had to have Eric Weir explain something to me. And I hope my finance department in the future would do a better job of doing something. On that, on your warrant claim, there's something called ABC Blue Book. And I had to ask Eric what was purchased. In the future, when we purchase something from a catalog, I believe that we need for the public's knowledge have our finance department or our uh, department heads tell us the norm nomenclature of an item we buy from that catalog. We spent $600 for a cr crampers, it's a tool, and if you if a person hadn't asked and wasn't knowledgeable of what the blue book is people wouldn't have any knowledge of what my city purchased well as you do take advantage of 
quite often, Mr. Miles, you are always welcome to call and ask what a purchase was made for. Is there any other public comment on the Thanks, consent calendar? Okay. We are going to move on to reports. We have no public hearings this evening. Mr. Butler, do we have any reports from staff or outside agencies? None this evening, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Are they here? Okay. Great. We are going to back up uh, to... Um, I'd actually like to thank uh, Robin Patch for organizing this for the council this evening. Um, but this council especially is extremely proud of our Crescent City Explorers and the officers who have become mentors and leaders uh, for your program. And so, um, as you all know, this is the eve of the election and your council may change after tonight. And so we thought it was very appropriate uh, to honor you this evening for all of your dedication and hard work um, and volunteer time that you give to our city. Uh, so I just hope that you understand how much uh, it means to us as adults and leaders of the community to have such fine young men and women out there representing our city. So we have a proclamation that I'm gonna read to you. And if you would like to all just kind of come forward. Um, Mr. Apperson, before I read this, would you like to, <laughs> would, you, <laughs> would you like to introduce them? Good job. Thank you. Okay. Whereas Police Explorers is a program for youth between the ages. Come on forward. <laughs> Perfect timing, Curtis. Give him a minute. Oh, you're fine. Okay. Whereas Police Explorers is a program for use between the ages of 14 and 21, looking to explore the law enforcement field is a career opportunity. It offers the youth a chance to get firsthand experience in seeing what a police officer really does on a day-to-day -day basis as well as giving youth an opportunity to create positive relationships with pe police officers, such as with program advisors, Sergeant Eric Apperson, Officer Justin Gill, Officer Maya Wiley, and Officer Charles Vachuba, who host a meeting every Thursday night to provide classroom and reality-based training to the explorers, often recruiting other officers to assist with training and insight within their areas of expertise. And whereas the Police Explorer Program is a branch of the Boy Scouts of America under the learning of learning for life category. The explorers receive training in many different aspects of law enforcement, such as building searches, traffic stops, traffic accident investigation, domestic violence, crime scene investigations, firearms, as well as participating in the ride along program, where the explorer can ride with a patrol officer and experience life through the eyes of an officer. In addition, the police explorers assist in major city events, such as the Ind Independence Day celebrations, sea cruise, Halloween parade, Christmas tree lighting, and a lot more than that. And whereas Sergeant Eric Apperson brought the Explorer program to the Crescent City Police Department and has been a, wow, that's a big word, quintessential role model. You can put that on your resume, Mr. Apperson, for the explorers. He was a school resource officer for several years and saw a need for the students to be involved in law enforcement to instill discipline, courage, skill, and leadership. Many former explorers, such as Lieutenant Garrett Scott, have enjoyed successful careers as a result of the Police Explorer Program. And whereas the City of Crescent City is very proud of the Crescent City Explorer's accomplishments, 
as they have given over 4,400 hours of service to the city. Now, therefore, we, the City Council for the City of Crescent City, California, do hereby proclaim November 1st, 2010, as a day to recognize our Crescent City police explorers in the city of Crescent City and ask all Crescent City residents to join with us to express our appreciation to the Crescent City police explorers as outstanding representatives of the youth of the city of Crescent City and in thanking them for their service to our community. So I'm actually going to give this to uh, Mr. Apperson, but we're actually going to make a copy for each one of you. So uh, I, most of you know Robin Patch, and she'll make sure that you all get a copy of that so that you can be reminded uh, on a daily basis that your leadership and your service to our community is extremely invaluable, and we're especially proud of you. And I hope to see some of you go on into law enforcement and come back and serve our community. So thank you, and uh, Council, if you wish to add anything to that. 4,000 plus hours, that's a lot of hours in a year's time, thank you. It's not just the hours, it's the, it's the work that you do that really improves our community. I saw you out there Saturday for the uh, Halloween festivities and all the other work that you do, like uh, 4th of July, picking up trash and hauling it away. Thank you very much. I think I've echoed this before, but just for all you do, uh, just again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I know a lot of times uh, the number of hours you put in it seems like a very thankless job. Um, but as the mayor for the city for the past two years, I can't tell you how many times I've had people come up to me and thank me uh, for your service. And people do recognize and uh, appreciate what you do. Um, so I hope that, uh, that you appreciate it as well. So thank you. You can go watch the World Series now. <laughs> go Giants. Thank you, Mr. Apperson. Okay, uh, we are going to move on to public comment. Any member of the audience is invited to address the city. Comments of public interest or on matters appearing on the agenda are accepted. Please note that we're not able to undertake extended discussion or anything that's not on our agenda this evening. Uh, such items can be referred to staff for uh, further action. And uh, any comments that are not at the microphone cannot be a part of the public record, so please wait until you're at the microphone to make your comments. After receiving recognition from myself, please state whether you live in the city or the county and your name for the record. And your comment will be limited to three minutes. Any public comment? Mr. Miles. My name is Richard Miles and I live within the city limits. Uh, I'm here tonight to make three w requests. A date will be coming up soon uh, in November, and that is November 11th. If I can remind you, that's Veterans Day. I would hope city would invite some of our veterans after the next city council meeting and recognize some of them. The reason is a lot of our World War II veterans are passing away each day. 
Uh, and a good example is my dad is 86 years old. Um, and they have an oral tradition that they should that should be passed on to our youth. And then I have two concerns. Uh, I would hope my city council would revisit its, its lottery ordinance. And why I'm suggesting this is the rainy season has started to get and a group of our homeless population is gathering in our fountain area. Well, when they do that, they chase away the good citizens of this community from using that area. I would hope the city would cut loose with some funds and do three things. All the benches down in that area should be redone, redone in tr tr track lumber instead of the uh, lumber that's currently there because a, num a number of our skateboarders, track, if you sit on the, our seats, you probably would get a sliver somewhere and it just shows you a lack of non-preventing maintenance in that area. And I think it's time we fix our benches down there. Also, I hope in the near future, probably, I've been told that probably will happen this week, that we'll finish barking around our old Christmas tree and the two trees that were planted by our hardworking city crew next to the Southern Coast Health Respice Office. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to continuing business. Uh, item number eight, to consider and approve uh, payment 41 for wall and construction and invoice 8079 for Stover Engineering regarding our wastewater treatment plant. Any questions from the council? Can I get a motion? I would move uh, to approve uh, invoice number 41 in the amount of $129,391.37 uh, for wall and construction. Invoice number 8079 in the amount of $1,000. $105,918.28 uh, for Stover Engineering. Second. Go ahead, Rick Catherine. Is there any public comment? Okay, seeing none. Uh, please pull the vote. Council Member Murray? Yes. Council Member Slurt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns? Yes. Mayor Shalom? Yes, thank you. Item number nine, consider and waive full reading, read by title only, and adopt ordinance 757, an ordinance of the city council of the city of Crescent City, repealing chapter 13.3 of the Crescent City Municipal Code, and, act, and enacting an industrial waste pretreatment ordinance as uncodified or, an, as an uncodified ordinance of the city of Crescent City. Uh, take action as necessary and appropriate. Mr. Black. Yes, Mayor, this item was on your agenda once before on October 4, uh, and there was a publication error, so we had to recycle back and readopt this. Uh, the, the date on your staff memo, the City Council agenda report is still dated October 4, but uh, the facts hadn't really changed with reference to the ordinance itself, so we resubmitted that uh, for the record. I'd like that date to be corrected to November 1, uh, 2010. Uh, likewise, on this page, which actually occurs at the very end of your agenda, it also has October 4. That, should, that will be changed uh, for adoption purposes to November 1, 2010. Uh, otherwise, the matter is ready for your consideration uh, for uh, 
waiving the first reading, or waiving full reading, reading by title only, and adopting ordinance number 757. Great. And as I explained uh, when we went over this at the last meeting, waiving by title, um, w waiving the full reading and reading by title only just means that we're not going to read the, you know, 45-page document to you <laughs> aloud this evening. Um, and uh, just for the public's knowledge as well, this pretreatment ordinance is an ordinance that will go into effect to protect our wastewater treatment plant and to give us um, <clears throat> the uh, tools to uh, have a, an ordinance or, I'm sorry, have a permit with uh, a business that needs our treatment facilities and the ability to um, have them follow the rules uh, so that our treatment plant stays in good working order. So that's a very short synopsis of a very technical document. Um, is there anything from the council? Any questions? Nope. Um, I, I do have a question. Um, okay. I was talking to someone over the weekend. Um, for existing connections that have upgraded, say, uh, this is specifically for... Um, the microphone's not on. Oh, I had it turned on the wrong way, or turned off accidentally. Um, uh, specifically, 101 Laundry, who has upgraded their dry cleaning um, facilities to um, make them green, um, would they, uh, I guess they would need to speak with you specifically, but um, how would that affect them um, when they did those improvements? Would they talk with you about um, any changes that would uh, assist them in uh, their connections and their um, fees or how does that work for somebody like them that did the improvements to make them green or any other business for example yeah we would certainly encourage them to contact uh, the city staff mr. Barnes or mr. Weir um, I know that dry cleaners do have uh, some unique challenges um, because of the products that they deal with and, and the process that they use so uh, it's hard for me to respond specifically tonight, but we would definitely, definitely encourage you know, a move toward more environmentally friendly right. process. So. So. When you say they've gone green, are they using green products now, or what have they done? Well, I know that there's another um, dry cleaning company down in Eureka that has done the same thing so that they have less... Um, their chemicals are different, and so they're not as uh, toxic to the environment. So um, I don't know what um, Dottie Linville has used when she did the conversion, but I know that she would have to talk with with our people. But um, that's what I had understood. I didn't know. I wasn't even aware that she had changed her process, but um, I just found that through the grapevine that she had changed her process. So I know that's that. Good. So. That's my understanding, so. If I could point something out, um, I don't believe that the dry cleaners are supposed to be discharging chemicals into the plant anyway. But it's so, her pretreatment process? Well, she's not a, right now, she's not categorized as an industrial okay. use that requires pretreatment, so she's not, she's not on the system. There's only one user on the system, and that's Rumiano cheese. Okay. The, um, the proposal is that uh, fish processors would be considered an industrial use. Uh, okay. The um, Regional Water Quality Control Board is pushing the city to analyze the county jail as a possible industrial uh, okay. uh, user that would require pretreatment. Um, and I think that's just because of the size and magnitude of the, you know, the volumes of food and showers and laundry that go through there. Um, so it's a it's a case by case situation. Okay. Thank so you. did Dottie think she was had a pretreatment ordinance? I don't know. I it just you know word on the street. So and that it, so every business like that include we had talked about restaurants before too. Yes. Right. So that's another example. Restaurants. I, I think what you're going to see is in the future you will see. Uh, a spreading number of businesses categorized as businesses that need to pretreat 
their okay. waste. And restaurants, in a sense, do that because they're supposed to capture their greases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Um, but we don't, as yet, we're not categorizing them as industrial users. They're okay. just restaurants that can right. capture their greases. Okay. So it gets a little more complicated when you get into massive quantities and sometimes large quantities all at once. Maybe as part of an industrial process, you get a slug of, and that's actually a term used uh, in the industry, you get a slug of wastes that um, have to be pretreated and possibly metered out over time. Those are the kinds of things that we're, okay. that we're addressing. Okay. That just makes me think that there are a lot of people that may not understand how our wastewater treatment plant um, can be affected by local waste. And so um, I would encourage the new council uh, to um, maybe have staff work on some kind of educational piece that we can provide to business owners and or developers and or whomever may be a new user in the future. But um, I, th I think I talked about this once before where um, the byproduct of um, medic medicinal me you know, medications and those kinds of things um, can be a problem for the treatment plant and working with solid waste to educate. I mean, we are a JPA member, so it makes sense to work with them to educate the community on how to deal with those medicines. Obviously, one great way was when the chief recently had his take back program uh, with the county. So um, that was a huge success. But, you know, dumping them down the toilet is, is and can be a problem. So I think having some kind of an educational, if it's, even if it's a workshop or, a, you know, something we send out to business owners in the city um, and or residents, I think that's good. But this ordinance, this policy here doesn't really educate people on, on any of that. So that would be no. a good idea. Right. This is very technical. This is just our policy. Uh, okay. Is there any public comment? Mr. Miles? I have two concerns about this ordinance. And my first concern is when I read it Friday and I asked questions of staff, because I believe information is the coinage of democracy. There's nothing in this ordinance that Albert's Fishery nor the harbor itself decide that has anything to do with the amount of uh, ammonia that the city will accept at our treatment plant. And that's a, a concern of mine because I believe if a certain gentleman is elected to our Harbor Commission we could see the processing of prawns and shrimp coming from either Alberts or if another fishery went in there. We all know what shrimp used to do to our treatment plant. And then I don't know about everything that Dottie did, but I know some of the things she did. She went to a German company that specialized in a totally new process. Her costs in the past came from in her dry, dry cleaning equipment because toxic sub, substance were used and some of that toxic sub substance was released in the wash process, the dry cleaning, and she's done away with all of that with the new equipment she purchased. She told me today that actually she's saving on her water pail because it doesn't take as much water to run her dry 
dry, clean equipment, and that she was able to buy a new boiler that's more efficient and other equipment that make her business more efficient. So she's not discharging as much sewage, and this is just her dry cleaning part, not her laundry part. But she told me her average bill is $1,600 a month. And if she took advantage of this new system, and then she's actually saving water that's not going to her, there should be some equal, you know, when a, a business does this, uh, we allowed Rumiano Cheese to do this. And we even gave him a grant, but Thank we didn't you, give it. Uh, bye. Thank you. Uh, there are no um, pieces of information in this ordinance that would apply to Albert Seafoods or any other business because this is a policy. All of those individual um, allowances and regulations are written in the individual permits that are taken out with the city. Madam Mayor, it seems to me that we also had a discussion with Mr. Barnes at some point a while back uh, indicating that uh, um, the introduction of ammonia uh, from some kind of shellfish would be very problematic and could not happen in the new wastewater treatment facility. So I yeah. believe yeah. that. that yeah, it would not be up to the harbor or the harbor commissioners as to whether or not someone was going to process shrimp in the harbor if they are using our treatment plant, it would be up to the city. Yeah. And, and if they, if we were to say, no, you're not getting a permit to do so, then they would not be allowed to process shrimp. And that is the kind of thing that will be specifically dealt with in the permit with each business. Correct. Great. Thanks. Okay. Is there any other public comment? Seeing none. Bring it back to the council. I move that we repeal chapter 13.33 of our municipal code and um, enact ordinance 2010-275. That ordinance 757. Yeah, that's the one. It dated November 1st, 2010? That's, that's correct. Okay, I'll second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Or do I need to pull the vote on an ordinance? Could you please pull the vote? Council Member Murray? Yes. Council Member Slurt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns? Yes. Mayor Shalong? Yes, thank you. Okay, new business. Consider approve and authorize the signing as necessary of the following documents for the Costa Norte project. Uh, let's just start with uh, one item at a time. Let's start with resolution 2010-27. Uh, a resolution of the City of uh, Council of the City of Crescent City authorizing the City Manager to sign a certificate acceptance of deed of easement from CCPT Incorporated. Can we should start with that and then move on to each item. Does that make sure. sense? We can do it that way. You can take each of these individually? Well, no, not take them individually, but I was just going to say talk about them individually. Because they all kind of go together, don't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of a part of a package deal. Okay. Um, I still think that you're going to have to explain to the council what each document is so I can read them all at once if that's easier for you guys to understand. Uh, deed of easement, certificate of acceptance, letter allowing work to be done in existing easement area, quick claim deed and easement maintenance agreement. Please start with A. Okay, Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, I think Mr. Black and I are gonna kind of tag team on this. Uh, the exciting news is that uh, Mr. Baugh has submitted his plans for plan check just within the last week, so that's a significant milestone in the project. And these actions that we're requesting you to take tonight are related to that and to the next steps that he needs to take uh, to fulfill the requirements that the Coastal Commission made on issuing their coastal development permit. It's a lot of paperwork for basically a fairly simple 
step. Uh, the Coastal Commission required that Mr. Baugh, as part of the Costa Norte project, provide a 20-foot access path to the public for uh, coastal access. Currently, there's a 60-foot utility easement that is owned by the city. And this, we're talking about the, part, the portion of the project that would be the southern end of Costa Norte and the northern end of the Hampton Inn, so in that general area. As part of the project, Mr. Baugh is well, the city is, is deeding, granting to Mr. Ba 40 feet of that 60 foot utility easement. And then 20 feet will be preserved for public access and coastal access and public use through a path. There's also, as part of this package, there are agreements regarding the maintenance of that path. So that's what you see as the, the easement maintenance agreement, letter F. And the resolution, the first document, is basically authorizing me to sign this entire package of documents, including uh, the acceptance of the deed of easement from the operating corporation that, that Mr. Boss developed, which is CCPT Incorporated. So all eight items, I guess it's uh, six items, are related to the same basic transaction, and that is allowing for the 20-foot coastal access and sorting out the ownership of what is currently a 60-foot utility easement. And this is all, nothing, none of this is new. This was all part of the, the project as it moved through the process. And the Coastal Commission specifically required the 20 foot public coastal access. So we're recommending uh, that the city manager be authorized to execute these documents and that the resolution be approved. And we will uh, be glad to answer any questions that you have about that. We're going to take a 30 second recess here. Kitty Corner Walk. Burns is just conferring with our attorney as to whether or not he lives within 500 feet of the project area because if one of us lives within 500 feet and we own property it's considered a conf conflict of interest I think I'm fine you're for your 501 yeah 501 okay thank you for checking sometimes it's yeah. you forget about that stuff yeah. until you start looking at the piece of property and it's like oh I live in that region <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so Mr. Butler, did you have um, uh, our, I mean, we don't have a surveyor on staff, but did you have somebody take a look at all of this work to make sure that it's suitable for the city's needs? Yes, so we've been aware of this portion of the project for a while, and uh, it's been done in conjunction with our public works department, uh, city engineer, and our associate planner. So we're confident that uh, the city's interest, oh, and by the way, I did have uh, Mr. Black review all of these documents uh, before we submitted the uh, item to the council. So uh, we're comf comfortable with uh, the wording, the layout. What survey school did you go to? That part I didn't. <laughs> I didn't I didn't do the no I I'm, I'm interested in after we were discussing the other day what the quit claim deed actually means I believe that uh, wish mr. Uh, Taylor were here because we had this a similar discussion I don't know Rod did you run yeah, that one down yeah, we stated it in the staff report 
a way that I think we can, a layman can understand you. Let me just read. Uh, so on November 4th, 2009, the Coastal Commission issued CCPT a conditional notice of intent to issue a coastal development permit for the project. CCPT needs 40 feet of the 60-foot City of Crescent City utility easement to construct the Costa Norte project. Therefore, CCPT is asking the city to sign a quick claim deed covering the 40-foot wide portion of the old clinic property. So we are deeding over to CCPT 40 feet of that easement that they need to build the project. And then 20 feet will be retained for public access. 20 feet of the original 60 feet will be retained for public access. And, and, util and, and it'll stay as a utility access. And the 40 feet will still stay as a utility. Plus 20 the, feet. Yeah. Well, it's a no, 60 the, the 40 feet. The 40 feet we're giving up will no longer be a utility access. We're giving it up to Mr. Baugh to actually build on. Uh, but the 20 feet is considered. We're giving him 40 feet to build on? Yes. Of the, it's just an easement, so it's not property that we own. We just have rights. We have rights in a full 60 feet, right. which is not necessary. We don't need 60 feet. It's right. not a through street or anything like that. Yeah, it's an old roadbed, and that's why we kept an easement over the totality of it, but we don't need that much. The 20 feet is going to be sufficient for utility purposes, and it will also double as the public access walkway. And if an ambulance needs to get down there or a fire truck, it's still big enough to, you could get a vehicle down there. Does that make sense? 20 feet? Oh, yeah. Wide. You can get a fire truck down there? I hope so. Okay. I haven't met many fire trucks that are. Is it normal for a city to just, to just deed over property to a developer without any yeah, it's, interest it's, in return? And the document is included in this package. Back in 1961, your city council predecessors uh, abandoned that portion of A Street, I believe it is, and uh, essentially merged the property itself into this parcel. But the, an easement is just the right to drive over it or to trench right, through it. Right, I understand yeah. that. And so we're we're abandoning an unneeded 40 feet of an easement and we're keeping the basic easement which is sufficient for utility purposes and then he is uh, quit claiming I'm sorry he is granting us an easement because it is technically his property so you have two easements on the same 20 feet ours for utility and ours for public access we're retaining one and he's giving us the other and it's not, it's not uncommon, I don't think, for a city to give up un, unneeded portions of an easement in order to help the uh, property owner, whether it be a developer or homeowner or whoever. If that makes sense. Thank you. Any questions, Council? I actually had several questions, Madam Mayor. Please. Um, as an architect, I guess I looked at this fairly hard uh, because I'm familiar with these kinds of things. Um, and I guess I was, in general, to me, it seemed like there was some vagueness about some of the easement descriptions, uh, and I'll cite a couple of them. Uh, if I remember, there's uh, one description about in the first five feet of the northerly edge of the 20-foot easement, uh, there can be uh, obstacles uh, up to five, five feet out of grade. I'm sorry, five feet from the northern edge of the 20-foot, which would be uh, one quarter of the easement. There can be actually uh, obstacles up to plus 10 feet above grade is what it says. And the, the question I have is, um, is that existing grade or is that new grade 
because uh, we're given a two-dimensional map with no spot elevations. And typically in a civil drawing, uh, there would be a, a section uh, that would show the vertical uh, differences in the topography. So we don't have that information. And, and if I recall, the project is uh, supposed to have a subterranean parking structure. So I don't know if some of the site is gonna be excavated. So would it be from that excavated? And usually these things are very finite pinned down. In, in city of San Diego, it's from existing grade, period. Uh, it makes a big difference if it's from existing grade or new grade uh, after alter, alterations. So that was a question I had. And um, where it defines that an op obstacle can protrude up to 10 feet in height, that's basically the height of the one-story building. So for five feet of width, potentially there could be something 10 feet high, which is, seems to be in complete contrast to the whole notion of maintaining a view corridor of 20 foot of width, which was, I think, the original intention of the coastal. I thought it was a 10 foot overhang, but I might have misread it. So that Where is it at, Charles? Just so we can. Page refer. 104, the real property easement description, exhibit C. Actually, um, is that it? I don't see a page number here. It's this exhibit C down at the bottom? No. Grantee shall retain the right to protect. It was, I, it's in the recitals of the deed of easement, and it's item number 3.6. So what I'm, what I'm looking at, and this is not there, but it's in this prop, property easement description. Grantee shall retain, that would be BA, shall retain the right and the project as permitted under coastal development permit number blah, 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 may encroach up to a maximum of five feet into the north side of the vertical access easement for construction, maintenance, and use at or above 10 feet above ground level. So what I, what I understood that to mean is that there's going to be an overhang above a portion of the 20 foot easement, just on one part of it, just the vertical access portion. That means to me that of this 20 foot wide lane, he can go up 10 feet and then not come over more than five. Yes, that's how I read it. So it would be so partially the, covered. Cantilever. Yeah. Cantilever, yes. It would be like a cover, five foot of the 20 foot would be, could be yeah. covered. Now what this is reciting is that that has already been put into the coastal development permit. And uh, I guess the part that I don't know is whether that was put in there by the Coastal Commission or by us when we originally enacted it. Um, but it appears to be part of his permit. So he could be above that too. He could go up 20 feet and still do it. Right. It says at 10 feet or above. Right. So it sounds like we're maintaining, maintaining uh, 10 feet clear. You're still maintaining 20. Entire 20 feet. You're still maintaining 20 feet. But five feet. But could be overhead, Our, you, but you could stand really out on only have and five feet could be covered. <laughs> so you really only have 15 feet if you were to need a, an access. If you needed, if you were bringing something through there. Yes, like that was higher than 10 feet. Sailboat I, or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it was higher than fire 10 feet, 10 you, feet only had, you would only have 15 feet clear, absolutely clear. Most of our fire trucks are not 10 feet tall. Even the ladder truck is not, I don't believe 10 feet tall from ground to the top of the ladder. I don't, I don't think so. I think so. They're, they're, I think they're putting, they're getting close. But there, we also have 15 feet of width that's open to the sky. Right. So they can get through 15 what, feet. What's a, width. what's a fire engine? Eight feet wide? 
max. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then uh, another question um, is. There's this 20-foot uh, wide access that goes uh, 233 feet, uh, the length of the site towards the ocean. I went out and uh, walked the site and photographed it. Uh, and there's some grade differential. Now, it talks about uh, the, the con proposed path to be pro uh, uh, constructed by the developer. But to me, there's nothing that defines the path at all as far as materials, sizes, specifications. Are you uh, talking about the coastal trail part? Right. Because they don't have a permit to do that yet. From what I read, it that, says. That, that's my point. Yeah, 3.7 is upon securing a coastal development permit for the construction of a coastal, tr coastal trail, grantee may request an amendment to the permit to extinguish all or portions of the lateral access easement as described in Exhibit C. See, I think that's even a different issue that I was actually going to raise. Yeah. The, the, my my uh, point is uh, we're talking about easements and right-of-ways and access, uh, and yet there's no design that's been put forth. There's no criteria, as I understand. I mean, is it going to be handicapped? access ADA so then you have a slope ratio that has to be maintained you have to have level landing places you have to have handrails you have to have guardrails I don't think those things have been decided um, but it's, in it's the way strange I, to me that it's open-ended the way I read it is if they do get a permit to do that then they uh, the amendment that they'll ask us to approve will remove the lateral access easement. Well, I think uh, what that was referring to, uh, if I could uh, try and make this clear, the 20-foot wide easement that's 233 feet uh, long towards the ocean and the beach, then it has a right turn dog leg for 136 feet. And that goes to the corner of the property, which uh, the Smithers property backs up to. In what I'm understanding, 3.7 uh, in the recitals saying that if there's a right-of-way mm, that's abandoned or altered at Wendell Street, that that trail may in fact go through Wendell Street right-of-way and then you would abandon this 10-foot mm, wide, plus or minus, there's not a dimension there, dog leg that goes over to a quote unquote viewing platform. public viewing platform so it it sounds like there's a lot of iffy things the platform is proposed to be in the far right corner and and i don't uh, i don't understand why uh, you're taking people down 233 feet and then a dog leg for 136 feet just to end up at a corner where they're kind of landlocked, they can't go anywhere, and it's a viewing platform. Um, what's the construction of it? What's the height of it? Uh, there's some reference uh, in some of the recitals about the top of a bluff, but nothing definitive. And then it seems like, I mean, if, if it's a viewing platform, you would have to have a guardrail if there's a grade differential greater than 30 inches you'd have to have handrails. So there's a whole bunch of criteria. And then what kind of materials is it made of? So it just, it seems strange that this is just completely wide open at this time. I, I think that what's going on here is that the developer is attempting to put the legal entitlements to the ground space in place so that he can go forward with his development. Bob, can you talk into the microphone, please? I think what's going on here is the developer is trying to put the legal status of the different ground spaces uh, to rest with the proper, the recordation of the proper legal documents. 
the coastal development permit for the the very good points that you raised, Charles, is still to be done. So all of those things will be subject to planning commission, your review, and probably coastal commission review. I just viewed this as giving him the easement. It just gives him the the width and length. It doesn't talk anything about slope and handrails and ADA accessible stuff. That's all going to come with permitting. That's yeah. that's what I the way that I'm So the, the Planning Commission has reviewed this? Yeah. In, in, in the sense that everything that Mr. Baugh is attempting to accomplish here is part of his existing coastal development. Program. So this is these are actually the Coastal Commission made the granting of these easements and the acceptance, by the way, of this easement by the city. Those are conditions of him being able to go forward with his plans, his, his plans, his basic project. If he doesn't get the easements, he can't make a plan. So would Mr. Ania, uh, representing the Planning Commission, would he be able to address the viewing platform? Sure. Can you come forward, please? Richard Adia, Crescent City. At our last planning commission meeting, we, we approved the walkway, the pathway that leads to Wendell Street, not the viewing platform because nothing has come to us yet for the viewing platform. But he, Mr. Baugh, um, wanted to uh, finish that trail for us that's in our general plan, and he's going to pay for that. And it's an asphalt trail at this point, but there's still a lot of an unanswered questions of what happens after it's put in and slope and stuff like that. But we did approve the concept of having that pathway to Wendell Street, but not the viewing platform. We have no information. We're just like you. We have no information. Mr. Ania, how do you approve a concept? I mean, what does that mean, I mean we approve, to the Planning Commission? We approve the, the pathway, the coastal trail pathway that's in our general plan. And okay, that so concept. that doesn't have any kind of um, regulations or slope or handrails or ADA it's just or a walkway it's just a walk it's from Wendell Street to the existing walkway behind the Hampton Inn that's separate it's a separate just completing our trail loop there that's what we approved at our last meeting the platform part is different that's a separate walkway we haven't seen anything on that so there are no um, what am I trying to say um, Specifications. Thank you. Yeah. There are no specifications for that trail that you approved? No, there are. There, it, it's an asphalt trail, and, and um, um, as far as slopes and things like that, it's just, it's just a walkway. That's all it is. It's a walkway. Do you know it's how wide it is? Is it six feet? It's either six or eight feet wide. It's, it's, I think it's six feet, and it's, it's level. It's a walkway that connects us to the, to the easement that you're talking about. From that easement, it connects it to Window Street. It makes a loop. The platform area that you're talking about now is closer to his uh, development, and we have not seen that. We haven't taken any action on that. We haven't. So, Mr. Nini, uh, uh, the platform at location itself, was there any process that that went through as to the disposition of it on that water frontage of the property? Not, not at the Planning Commission level. Because it, it's interesting where it's placed, it has the maximum impact on two residences, the, the Smithers residence and the Scott residence. Whereas if it was uh, centered on the 136 foot uh, ocean frontage, it would have the least impact on those two residents. And, and if it was actually located at the right angle dog leg intersection, it would probably be the least impact on anybody and the most accessible. So I was just curious. And I agree with you, and, and, and several residents were there that took that up, and we could not discuss that because the only item before us was that what was the pathway. The platform has, we have seen nothing on the platform yet. So what if we want the platform in a different location? That's not being discussed right yeah, now. That's it's just the easement. We're not talking about plans for the where it's going to be or anything. I know, but it's maybe we don't easement. want to approve the easement unless. Uh, so I actually think it affects the easement because if you look at my diagram, I highlighted it in yellow, and it's a 20 by 25 foot component 
mm -hmm. at this end here versus if it was in the center versus if it was at the other end, it would change the language of the easement and or the functional relationship of the easement. But it might affect what's already uh, in the architectural design, that platform where you're suggesting it be placed. The, he hasn't gone before architectural design with that platform. He hasn't even taken it to the, to the planning commission. What I'm saying is his um, architectural design for the condominiums has already gone through and been approved. So that platform that council members are suggesting be placed there it, uh, may not be possible because of his architecture, architectural plans that have already been approved for the whole con condominiums as a whole may not be possible. I don't think that's the case. I think the easement's a separate issue. I agree. I'm just saying that suggestion that council member Slurt is making for the platform, I think we should just leave that off the table at this time and bring it back at a different time because it's. Well, the one thing I will say is if you accept the easement, you are accepting easement number three, which is the view platform easement, and that would tend to irrevocably situate the easement I think it would give more options where you can place. Doesn't mean you have to use the easement. No, it, it doesn't mean you have to use it. He could he could still locate it at the f furthest south edge of that. You know, it's it's, a, it's a, essentially the northwest north yeah northwest corner of the lot. The further south you come, uh -huh. it wouldn't say you couldn't put it down there clear at the south end of that. Would it, have to, the would it have to encroach out into Wendell Street? N wouldn't, n no. I'm, I'm talking about this right here. Yes. If you granted this easement, he could still place this wherever he'd like on his property along this easement. But he's looking at this. Yeah, but not in the same, not the same yeah. size. If he did this, no, so not, not, not here. no, I'm not talking there, I'm talking right here. And by the way, Giants 3, Rangers 1. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm not talking about going out into the 20 foot right away. I'm talking about just moving this down halfway, like, you know, you could move it halfway down, three quarters of the way down, or move it down so the edge is right on the 20 foot easement. You could just slide this down the property line. In, in concept, the, the only thing, point that I want to make is, is I see the dimension now. The easement across the water frontage is 12 and a half feet wide, which is uh, roughly. Uh, it's half of the 25 feet. Mm -hmm. So right. the point being that there's another 12 and a half feet. For the would, platform. Mm -hmm. For the platform that would have to modify the easement in the future. Well, I guess the, the bigger question is, and I'm not sure about this, but is this large area here, this is the building footprint. So if you right. just move that square to the middle, uh, going to change his foundation. Uh, I don't think so. It's, it's out of the this, way. It is out of the way. If you look at this, it has the building foundation okay, on thank it. Thank you. Okay. So I that, see. So that give the, the building set back, it looks like at least right. 20, well, yeah, quite a, quite a ways. Looks like it might be like 40 feet. Probably, yeah. Okay. So if you look at that and just slide it down, it right. looks to me like you could do it, but I'm not a engineer, construction guy, or architect, or? So, I believe that you could proceed tonight to accept the easements as presented, but still negotiate with Mr. Baugh to either trade easement number three for a different easement in a different location that would accomplish the same result, or just ask him for the additional 12 and a half feet by 20 that would allow you to create a second easement and just not make use of the first of the first one that, that the would one that work. you accept tonight um, it would leave it open so there's some flexibility there yeah maybe um, for a more optimum condition the thing I don't want to the thing I, I don't want to misrepresent to your council 
that the Coastal Commission, for example, may have already considered these issues and taken such a position that would require revisiting the Coastal Commission on this easement question. That could be the case. I don't know. I don't know. But it strikes me. You're shaking me your head no. Oh, I'm just agreeing with Catherine that if we can possibly avoid going back to them and getting them involved, that would be preferable. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't. Well, of course. Think, but yeah. we should know that answer before tonight. Well, I guess I'm saying that. I'm not sure that you need to know that because by accepting easement number three, and that's that's the little square here that is the viewing platform, I don't believe you're necessarily committing to, do, to, to construct a viewing platform there. You're just accepting the easement for it. And you could either give that a piece of that up later on or all of that up later on in exchange for moving it or you could just add another easement in a different location and put the viewing platform there. Well, I agree with Mr. Slurt in having a viewing platform at someone's backyard, or I'm not sure how their yard is <laughs> situated. Side yard, right, right next to their window in a right. six-foot high. Yeah, I think, that's an, I, I, I think that's inappropriate. Seems like the worst place it could be. Yeah. What, what, would be a, what would be a concern, and this is not necessarily a driving consideration, but what would be a concern is if you don't accept the easements at, as presented, then Mr. Baugh has not met his conditions for his coastal development permit. He cannot submit his plans. He cannot go forward. If you do accept the easements as presented, I don't believe you're locking in that that's where the viewing platform has to go. And uh, that's good. If this was a pro if this was a piece of property and that was my property and I wanted to build a deck there and I was within the grounds of all the permitting and I was met all the setbacks, could I be said I couldn't build a deck there? Right, but that's that's your that right? but that's a that's a deck for your use. This is a deck for hundreds of people, public people, to use. That's different. I think you ought to make a gate and its fence and just use the deck. It's a public deck. I'm just going to use it to put a barbecue out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think of it that way. Mr. Too. Smithers, you are now Smithers Barbecue. <laughs> and you can have a deck. You can go right out there and use it anytime you want. The, the uh, deck. Smithers ribs. <laughs> the deck as proposed uh, occurs in what would be uh, probably a backyard, a rear yard setback. It's right up to the property line. Typically, you can't have any structure occurring within a side or front or rear yard setback. Yeah, it's going to be uh, anywhere from five to six inches. Yeah, anywhere from five to fifteen feet setback, depending on the situation. Have, have the Smithers and the Scotts been notified of this hearing? This isn't a hearing. Yeah, this isn't really a hearing. Um, they were at the we're discussion, planning commission, planning commission's uh, meeting With last week concerns. about the trail. There were several concerns on that. We couldn't talk about that because that wasn't before in front of us, but the, the neighborhood is very concerned, uh, expressing what Mr. Slurt is saying about it being so close. I so I think they'd be relieved to know that maybe the city can do something about that if it ever comes to be to put that in. I think the good idea is just to move it down, move it down in the center on the far south sure. edge of the property. Or so it was never on the in there for that option. Yeah, I, I'm a little uncomfortable just accepting it as is. Could we approve it without that easement? I think we ought to approve it with the well, caveat that we're not approving the building of the deck. We're, we, in fact, we could say the deck should be moved further south. Well, let me tell you what my understanding is, and because I, I didn't know this was an issue, I don't think Mr. Butler did either. The, um, it's our understanding, I believe, that these three easements, the dedication of those to the city by Mr. Baugh and the acceptance of that dedication by the city was a condition of his coastal development permit. So if he doesn't satisfy that condition, he can't get a building permit. Right, but he can have his easement redone yes. and resubmitted. Yes, and that's what I, that's what I want to, that's what I was uh, telling you before is that I don't believe that accepting an easement closes the book 
on where the viewing platform ultimately ends up. I think we're just accepting that Mr. Baugh is giving us the right to have a, a viewing platform there, but not necessarily a duty to put it there. And then we can, because that's the subject of another permit, we can go back to Mr. Baugh and say, we really don't want it there. We would like to give up that easement in exchange for another easement somewhere, you know, move to the south uh, along uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, which one is it, the horizontal axis, the lateral axis, ex excuse me. So I believe that that is a possibility. I believe, first of all, that this is a, your acceptance of this is a condition of him being able to go forward. Second, that it doesn't require you to put it there and third, that you can negotiate with him and, if necessary, with the Coastal Commission to I'd like re to, put to that, relocate. I, whenever we approve, I'd like to th to be that clearly stated. Yeah, and, right. and I would I would suggest that you. But do I feel it in like two different motions. But I feel like tonight we are accepting this easement in its place because this gives true coordinates of where that platform will be placed in this easement and it sounds like bob just said it wouldn't necessarily be it so gives easement it doesn't say where the platform is then in my mind the easement by accepting the easement you're accepting the right you're accepting a right but an easement does never never requires you to exercise that right it's just like if your neighbor gives you a right to have a driveway across one side of their property and they record that as a legal instrument. It's got a description and everything. And you never come along. You never use it. You never pave it. You never do anything with it. You haven't violated anything. You just haven't used your rights. Right. But we are giving him the right to place it there with this easement. So if we no, give no, him he's that. he's giving you the right. He's the one. He, you're the one that is accepting these easements. Yeah. It's going to be your path, your viewing platform. Yeah. By you, I mean the, the city, of course. He's it's giving hours. up rights in his land yeah. to the city. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be It'll a be public city property. This is going to be a public improvement. Now, he will pay for it. He will build it. But once it's built, the duty to maintain becomes the city's. I didn't mean to muddy the water. No, I don't think you have. I think, uh, I think it can be addressed in a motion uh, and that we can still move forward with uh, considering adopting the easements as presented. Uh, there was one other item on the <clears throat> drawing here uh, created uh, for Costa Norte, I think by Stover Engineering. It talks about uh, 1.24 acres with 38 condomini condominium units. My understanding is there's 36. Their easements also misspell Wendell Street. Where did you get the 36 figure? Is that from the staff report or from? Um, I, I've seen it several yeah. places. So I think 38 is the correct is it? number. Yeah. And okay. I noticed uh, in looking at this again this evening that there was one place in the staff report that referred to 36. Okay. And I don't think that's accurate. 38 is the correct number. Fine. I'm satisfied. So if you'd like, I could try to phrase possible language for a motion. You could adopt a motion concerning the viewing platform before you accept the easement. And, uh, or you could do it afterwards, either way. But you could adopt a motion that expresses the council's position. So you're saying two separate motions? Yeah, I think you have to do it that way because this is a legal instrument that's going to be recorded. But what you're talking about is what happens after. The well, legal let me instrument. let me just let language state that uh, I'm, I move that we uh, on the easement number three, the plat, the view, the view platform easement, that we uh, 
feel that that platform should be moved to the furthest most point possible uh, along the north south easement and, and uh, so when the permitting is actually takes place that we view the placement next to the Smithers and Scott residences we want that you know at the furthest place south from that from those two parcels I would support that second. I'll second it okay is there any public comment mr. miles Miles, I am a city resident. Um, I did something today because I have some concerns about Randy's project to begin with. So I made a phone call after going to the library and using the state directory. I called an office in Santa Cruz. This is the office of the Coastal Commission that deals with public beach access. Well, I want to remind my city of about five things. First thing, the city at one time owned the road that went behind one side of the old hospital side. To date, they still own the road that goes into the parking lot of the wellness center. That's city-owned property. Uh, my concern, and I talked to a person at their office, and to date, the people that deal with beach access hasn't seen any documentation from this developer. And I kind of understand why now, because it all hinges on this easement but my concern is is in the past we gave an easement away to the Hampton Inn I don't think we should give one side of that easement that belongs to the city away without spe specific conditions I think Mr. Ross needs to provide parking for people who want beach access. Uh, and I do have some concerns about our fire truck getting down to that area in, because there's been known people down there that have started beach fires. And Steve had to go down there and put them out. So whatever the slope in to get a fire truck down there so that my fire crew can run hoses out to put out a fire is very important. So if you got an overhang of a building and my fire truck has to get in there, what about if they have to take the big ladder truck in there to spray down on the beach I wouldn't want to take the side of Randy's building off. Uh, and then, when I talk to this person... And Richard, your three minutes are up. Yeah, Kelly, I can see. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Mr. Ania? Richard Inia, Crescent City. I'm not concerned at all about the uh, the fire trucks because, first of all, they wouldn't get that close to the beach. They'd go on the Window Street side, and there's plenty of room on that easement for them. But I, what I wanted to say is I wanted to, to tell the council you're on the verge of something that might be historic here for a while. In all the years that I've lived here, at least I've lived here seven years this time, and I haven't seen a project yet by a private developer that is building condominiums for people that want to buy them that's not federally funded, federally subsidized, or anything, subsidies at all. This is brand new stuff that other cities, especially along the coast of California, have, and they're called timeshares. 
very, very popular, which will bring different people to our community, sharing that, uh, spending money in our community. And I think that's very good that, that the city is now progressing and not just staying in subsidized housing. And I think those, those apartments, eventually condos, will sell right away because people are looking for that. Fort Bragg has lots of them. Mendocino has them. And as you go down the coast, that's what, that's what they have, and it's finally reached Crescent City. I think it's an excellent project for people that want to pay the money, that want those views, and want to have a place here on the coast, especially in Crescent City. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Well, this council is supportive of the project. Um, we have been all along. And um, I, th I think that um, even as we support this project, uh, we have a right and a responsibility to look at every piece of it uh, along the way and make sure that the final product is ex exactly what our city deserves. Um, so I appreciate the questions that you brought forward, Mr. Slurt, and I think they're very valid, and I think that we need to do, uh, we need to think about the neighbors of this large project along the way. And I would not support that platform being built in that location. And I'm going to completely trust your judgment this evening that this approving this easement as is with some minor language changes is going to protect our ability to change <laughs> the outlook and, and that's why uh, and I'm saying that out loud for the record because I disagree with it um, so well, I want to go back to the first thing I said which is that I'm not speaking I, I haven't researched the status with the Coastal Commission or how fixated the Coastal Commission is on that specific location right for this I just I worked in land surveying for a number of years and dealt with many legal descriptions and I'm rusty <laughs> but I remember many lawsuits after legal descriptions were written yeah. um, well the one I am very confident of a bunch of the things I said but the one thing I'm not confident of because I don't know is exactly what did the Coastal Commission say about this as being the only possible location for this viewing platform right they and said I, that this is this easement description is the only possible location then you're not going to be able to change it without going back to the Coastal Commission and I'm not representing that you can but I it does seem most logical to me that uh, in the design process and the coastal permitting process for the actual pathway and, e and uh, viewing platform that it's negotiable to try to move that viewing platform. If it's not negotiable, then you end up in a place where you have to choose between the viewing platform and the project. And that's a possible scenario, but it, it doesn't seem likely to me, but it's a possible scenario. Right. Well, and I have a... I'm not certain why our planning commission has accepted a trail with no specifications either so I don't know if you can go back and have a conversation about that but it seems odd to me that we would accept a, a trail without specifications other than it's going to be asphalt and six feet wide well you're accepting the location the details of what it looks like and what kind of railings and what kind of surface and all of those sorts of things, as I understand it, are still part of the permitting process. I believe that's true. <coughs> yeah. Exactly. So, okay. I hope I'm not in trouble. But I <laughs> I just don't I'm, think we've done our, our homework as well as we and could I, have. And I, and I agree. I agree with you that not all the homework's been done. And if you want to put this over for two weeks to another meeting, uh, you, that is well within your power. And maybe that's the smartest thing to do. Because 
We are, you're going forward today under some uncertainty by putting it off for two weeks. You are delaying the submittal of building, per, of building plans and stuff like that. But you know, this is obviously an important issue and another two weeks would allow us to fully develop it for your information. And we don't have it, f I'm, I'm gonna tell you right up front, we don't have it fully developed for your information. So I, didn't re I did not personally realize, I don't think Mr. Butler did either, that this location, the specific location of this platform, ergo the easement, was, uh, was the major issue that it obviously is. Well, I would have expected that our, um our Eric Taylor would have communicated that to you if that's what happened at the Planning Commission. I don't know about that, but I do know that I didn't, I don't think we knew, <laughs> so. I'm not even sure that there was a major, was there a major discussion about the platform location? I know there was discussion about the trail <laughs> itself. But. I think what Mr. Aeneas communicated to us a little bit ago is that there was a lot of contention about the platform area but they weren't able to undertake it as a discussion item because it was not on the agenda yeah thanks rich madam uh, mayor i think it'd be appropriate to set this uh, table up for two weeks have the city attorney review it so we know exactly what we're talking about if 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 it's already a done deal with the coastal commission that will eliminate you know certain considerations and issues and if it's uh, there's some latitude we'll know that also and then we can respond uh, accordingly i think it's a good idea we still let our concerns be known and that one motion that i made still talks about the easement that we should have that moved south i think that might be you know worth voting on because it doesn't deal with the granting of the easements it just talks about the location as a directive yeah so I called for the question. No, he'd like his motion to move forward. Well, I call for the question. Okay. So all those in favor of accepting these easements. No, that's with, not my motion. I, let me finish. <laughs> all those in favor of accepting these easements with the um, additional language stated by Mr. Burns of moving that platform to a southerly location, is that correct? I didn't approve the easements. I, the, the, the motion. Okay, maybe was, I didn't understand the, the your motion. The motion was to send forth our views that the platform be moved to the furthest southern extreme that it can be moved. That was my motion, not to approve the easements. We were going to. So, so you want to make a motion to discuss our wish for the platform to move the motion was to do we need a motion for that i think what or the import of the motion would be to give general direction to all city staff that it do its best the staff your staff do its best to whatever the existing state of affairs is to move that platform as far south as it can go Okay. That was the, the general import of the motion. It's yeah, not to, it's not to, not to, not so approving. No, there was no motion to approve any easement. Okay. So it's direction to it staff. Was direction to move the pl platform to its to, I gotcha. its south. I gotcha. And then we were talking about doing that motion, and then our second set was to approve the easements, but I think we ought not do that. So my second would still stand then, mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Burns' motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? passes four to zero um, so we will put this on our November 15th agenda maybe if they do make any changes to these documents they can I might notice the um, the plot map also spells Wendell incorrectly just a major street in the also in all the documents so it should be spelled correctly it is also the the prints very small but uh, listen to what this says 20 foot wide vertical access easement the 20 foot wide vertical access yeah that's that's a term I believe that's a term of art in the coastal 
that they use that constantly, vertical access. They want vertical access. They don't want anything. It means but, basically but there's, a, there's an exception because there's going to be that cantilever of five feet into right. that 20 foot wide vertical access. Yeah. But vertical access is the term they use meaning running to the beach. Right? Like view shed. Yeah. But does the five foot cantilever take away from that 20 foot view shed? Yes, in a sense. Okay, I mean, so if you, if you can clarify look under, those. If you look under through that five by 10, 10 feet high area, you have view. But if you're standing there and you want to look up, you're not going to see the clouds over the ocean. So. Yeah. And you may need to get someone to review these documents oh, yeah. that no, I, I, actually has a license to do so. I treat it as a direction to staff. Yeah. To not just to do it themselves, but to do what's necessary. Thank you. Great. I, I'm sure that we can resolve this matter so it can move forward in the next couple weeks. Giants okay. won. Huh? Yay, Giants won. Yay. <laughs> Final score was? Three to one. World champ. Oh. Giants won. They are celebrating big right now. World champions. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, city council items. Consider miscellaneous uh, legislative matters, Mr. Butler. Do we have any? Nothing this evening. Okay. Reports, concerns, referrals of the council. Mr. Burns. Wonderful wastewater treatment plant. Everyone was up here was there. It was a great grand opening and it was a nice time to show that place off and it's, it's just a great addition to our community. Also, there was a nice doctor's reception. And don't forget to vote early and vote often tomorrow if you haven't done so already. <laughs> Thank you. Catherine? Definitely the uh, ribbon cutting was a highlight. I'm most appreciative that uh, we had a great turnout and the weather was wonderful. And one of the resounding comments was, no wonder it costs what it costs. We have a state-of-the-art facility. So mm -hmm. I was very proud of, uh, of uh, all the hard work that went into it and um, it, it really shows. So I think the community really understands why we did what we did, and it, it was great. Um, I attended um, some of the Halloween festivities uh, downtown on Saturday, and it was great to have the explorers there, so they did a lot of great work for us. Um, as uh, the mayor mentioned, I think uh, she, I don't know if she mentioned it yet, but we both attended the Building Healthy Communities um, meeting today, and um, that was uh, most informative. Um, then I uh, went to our Senior Center uh, Board of Directors meeting um, last month, and um, I also attended the Physicians Recruitment um, meeting, that, a reception for our new pediatrician, An Angela Young. So welcome, Angela, and we hope that you'll stay here um, and, and appreciate our community as much as we do. And uh, the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors meeting, and as Council Member um, Burns mentioned, Remember to vote, please. <laughs> Mr. Slurt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I also uh, greatly enjoyed the uh, grand opening ribbon cutting of the new wastewater treatment facility. Uh, to me, it was the most momentous thing that's happened in this community, uh, probably on the North Coast, in the history. Uh, Forty-two and a half million dollars. The contract at thirty-seven point seven million dollars. Uh, it was actually uh, under budget and on schedule, which is unheard of on a government project of this scope and scale and the kind of adversities associated with the project. Um, which leads me to uh, ask why our paper was not uh, present at the grand opening um, it's to me it's the most newsworthy major event that's occurred and it was uh, I think it was shameful that the paper did not cover it uh, on any level 
um, unfortunately. Hey, they had their ad reps there. <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. Uh, I attended. I, um, I just attended, I think, out of their own, on their own. I attended the uh, tri-agency uh, meeting last week with my colleagues. And um, then I also just wanted to you know, remind everybody to vote tomorrow. It's your right. And uh, it's the best way you can express yourself, I think, in our community. The more involved you uh, choose to be, the better for all of us. And then I would just like to offer an early salute to Mr. Burns, our colleague. Um, He's been uh, an incredible public servant, uh, and I thank you for your service and your passion and compassion in your service for many years now. So I salute you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did everything they did, and then some. <laughs> I'd like to just <laughs> reiterate uh, that we had a great housing and redevelopment uh, workshop. Um, and I think those two things are probably the next big things that we will be doing as a community is moving our redevelopment agency forward to help our, uh, our region um, become more productive and also to provide low income housing for those that, that need it. So I'm looking forward hopefully to continuing to work on those two things. Um, Really enjoyed the California Endowment presentation this morning for our local leaders. And um, the one thing that I took away from it was that we have to change our way of thinking. Um, continuing to let live in a negative space um, without changing the way that we think so that we can change the way things start at the root of the cause um, so that we can change things that happen in the future um, is really what the leaders in this community need to start working towards. And, and uh, I, I liked that, and the critical thinking piece of that um, was interesting to me. Uh, we had Pacific Power join us last Saturday with uh, two of our bid members and myself and our city manager and our public works crew. And we planted some trees. Uh, with a grant from Pacific Power, so I wanted to say thank you. Mr. Miles got his picture in the paper. Um, but uh, I want to say thank you. It's just the beginning of just more um, of our improvements in our downtown area. And possibly. Um, and the wastewater treatment plant. That must, I have to say, that must be one of the most amazing things I've ever attended. Um, it was, I was honored, first of all, to be the master of ceremonies. Um, I really had, I really enjoyed that. And what was awesome was the letter that we got from the Regional, Regional Water Quality Control Board congratulating us. And if nothing else, we should, we should just make a copy of that letter and send it to every city resident. Put it in our newsletter. I think it's, it's an outstanding, momenta, momentous document, and I was extremely proud of it. Uh, we have worked really hard to get to this place today, and uh, it rang true just one more time this week when I was attending my Rotary meeting, and uh, Carol Matthews from the College of the Redwoods talked about um, different new and different ways to educate our community and commented that they would like to add wastewater treatment classes um, to their list of um, things that people can pursue. And she also at that point said, because we have state of the art facilities here. So that was kind of exciting to know that our, you know, secondary education leaders are also very appreciative of what we've done as a city. So um, thank you. And it's been a pleasure to be your mayor. Tomorrow's election day. Get out and vote. And uh, this meeting's adjourned. <laughs>